a company called DL Software. So this hosts all of our software companies or apps, I should say. It's one company. Druglike, which is a computational chemistry screening platform, which I highly recommend you check out if you're in in, in this very, very narrow field. You just go to screen.druglike.com and you can play around with different proteins and try to discover a new medicine potentially or a new perfume or a new pesticide or whatever. Right now you can get up to 10,000 um, compounds for free, but you know what, I should, I should bump that to 20K just because you wonderful people are listening, why not? All right, so there's 9,000 compounds and it'll, it'll start screening. Under 10,000, you can do it for free, which isn't very much. Maybe I'll, I'll bump it to 20K. And so it starts screening immediately and you can see this compound, zinc 574 docks into this pocket, right? Interesting fit, but this is a lot better now, 8.4. That docks better. It's got not maybe a great scaffold, to be honest, but you could modify it theoretically. Um, and it'll keep going. You know, usually you want to screen something like 100,000 or a million of these, but where it's not a bad start. And you can always screen 10,000 over and over again if you wanted. So it's a pretty cool tool. I'm really proud of it. We haven't been building a ton in drug like. We're very kind of capacity constrained. We've only uh, a couple of developers, me, uh, Jason, uh, a couple of outsourced guys, and uh, we're just hiring our first new guy. So it's a really small team. We, we believe that you get the most productivity out of small teams. And you got to be really careful about how you scale that team. You don't want rando new developers joining every day because they won't be very productive. Um, depends on what kind of software you're making too. So this is drug like, oh, better. Better compound just popped up. Here we go. Okay, this looks more drug-like, as they say. This looks like a benzodiazepine, actually. If you look at it, there's no... Uh, it actually could be a benzodiazepine. Um, really cool kind of... Uh, really cool shape, right? 3D shape. Usually these things are planar. You have this really, like, Borg-like, you know, almost anthropomorphic shape, right? Looks like a little animal. Um, so that's uh, drug-like. Then we've got Godel. Godel is like a Bloomberg competitor. Um, it's uh, invite only at the moment, but it's, uh, it's a stock market app that allows you to really have something very similar. Chat room, all kinds of, you know, stuff like that. So um, Godel is uh, coming out later this year. And then um, Dr. Gupta, of course, Compute on Druglike is done on uh, AWS. Um, we have been invited to the early release of MedPalm 2, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, and the last product we're working on, so you know, yeah, so my next uh, app is going to be called uh, Wagey. So Wagey is kind of a natural extension of, um, of Gupta. So Gupta is a specific instance of Wagey, but Wagey, um, you know, Wagey could be considered kind of the like generalization or abstraction of Gupta. So Wagey, uh, Wagey spelled W-A-G-I-E. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna be something where you can hire these instances to do work for you. I will not ever become Islamic. Um, Gupta revenue will be generated through subscriptions. I think over time, you know, there'll be more and more value added platform, including content, and you're gonna really see a transformation there. But again, Wagey, Gupta's sort of one arm of Wagey, and, and Wagey will also do automated financial analysts, analysis, maybe automated, uh, automated legal work, automated assistant work, you know, stuff like that. So we'll, we'll see. It's early days. You know, we, we, this is a five to 10 year thing, you know, um, synthetic selling, synthetic intelligence or synthetic minds, uh, will be interesting. I'd say that like focus will narrow over time. But I do think that if you think about what we're doing, there's really just two verticals, healthcare 
and finance. I think that in essence, for, to do finance well, you need APIs, right? And so <clears throat> with those APIs, you create a view layer very quickly and very easily, now, thanks to front-end frameworks. So that's what Godel is. Um, with respect to healthcare, you think about healthcare and finance as inputs to an AI layer, in essence, that AI layer is it's really a monolith. It's one product. It's just different instantiations and different. I'd say the one product that sticks out as different would be drug-like, and we're not working too much on it. So I think um, our strategy is pretty, pretty clear, which is to use AI to make apps that people really love in healthcare finance, sort of SaaS consumer-facing apps. Good question. Coding tutorials for founders and entrepreneurs. I think that's, that's, a, that's actually a super important question. Outdoor cat. And maybe I should make that. <laughs> that actually sounds like something I, I might want to make. Um, because uh, if you're going to be a developer that works in, on the engineering team, that's one thing. But if you're going to be um, a developer that, um, or you're going to be a CEO that wants to understand computer science and what your engineers are doing, you want to be fluent in that. I think that's another thing, right? And I think that's really important. You can't really be a tech CEO or a software CEO without knowing a little bit on how to code. Um, and what, what's going on with different important libraries like Kubernetes or PyTorch or that, right? So, you know, it's hard to lead and inspire a software team if you can't talk, um, talk about and talk to um, important concepts in software. So, you know, if you don't know, for instance, you know... Uh, much about object-oriented programming or functional programming or like basic buzzwords, like you're going to be in a big trouble. But you, if you know a little bit about that stuff, you can talk to your staff intelligently, right? So like a software course for entrepreneurs would be kind of a cool idea, I think. You don't necessarily have to become a full-time developer, but you do want to and would want to sort of, you know, understand, uh, you know, the field better. So yeah, I, I think that the best way, of course, is just to start doing some development work yourself, right? But it, it will take a while before you understand what or why Docker and Kubernetes are useful, right? So like pretty, it, it can be pretty frustrating. So I do think that, you know, a guided tour of why some stuff is really valuable and why some stuff isn't, that'd be really interesting, actually.